Assertiveness, Part 1. Assertiveness is something that is a very important part of nursing skill. You need to be able to be assertive to push for what you know is right without being aggressive. Non-assertive can allow your clients to be put into a situation where their rights are not being upheld or where it may even be a danger. So we look at the different communication styles and we have non-assertive or passive, aggressive and assertive. And most people will demonstrate each of these communication styles at different points. So what comes to mind when you think of passive and aggressive behaviors? Most people have to make a conscious effort to develop consistent assertive behaviors. And this is something that I tried to work on a little bit with my clinical group during the fall semester. The nurse who communicates assertively can help minimize conflict and reduce stress and this can lead to more positive outcomes for the client. Non-assertive or passive behavior. This one is really difficult to deal with. People just don't stand up for themselves or for others. So the overall message of I do not count, you count. This behavior is indirect and passive and it communicates a self-perception of inferiority. So the consequence is the nurse is unable to recognize and meet the client's needs. You're allowing the wants, needs, and the rights of others to be more important and it creates a lose-win situation. With aggressive behavior, this type of behavior violates the rights of others. An aggressive communicator aims to get his or her own way and not even allow others a chance or a choice. It attacks. The consequence of aggressive behavior is it distances that aggressor from the staff and the clients. And people behaving aggressively try to set up a win-lose situation. Aggressive behavior can be active or passive, direct or indirect, honest or dishonest. Remember how you feel when you are the recipient of aggressive behavior. Now there's some misconceptions about assertive behavior. It might be perceived as being pushy or refusing to give ground or unwilling to compromise, being really stubborn on some issues or inflexible. But it is by far the best type of communication and it is expected in nursing. So with assertive behavior, assertive behavior is active, direct, and honest. It communicates self-respect and respect for others. An assertive communicator views his or her wants, needs, and rights as equal to those of other people. In other words, I count, you count. The goal is to have a win-win situation and it encourages honest open interactions and relationships. So how would you respond to a client that while you were collecting data through the admission process angrily tells you to get out because he's already answered these questions for the doctor? How can you do that assertively? So key points of assertiveness are listed here on this slide. When you use your own or own your own feelings, make sure that you use I statements when appropriate. These can be very useful in complex situations. 
Use I statements to make your feelings known. Make sure that you avoid expressing a belief or judgment. Avoid you statements. Avoid expressing only negative feelings. And avoid using nonverbal body language that contradicts your words. Negative interactions. Hmm. How coping mechanisms work. Very important to have an understanding of this type of mechanism. When people are anxious, the mind is going to try rational problem solving to escape the situation. If the escape is unsuccessful, a range of defense mechanisms can be triggered. There's two properties of coping or defense mechanisms. They appear unconsciously and they can distort or transform reality. There's no real improvement in coping abilities because the problem remains unsolved. The nurse should be aware of his or her own coping mechanisms and their effectiveness. Project projection is a coping mechanism which individuals attribute their own weaknesses to others. Rationalization is a logical but untrue reason being offered as an excuse for inappropriate behavior. Denial is the nurse refusing to recognize the existence and significance of the client's personal concerns. And compensation is covering for real or imagined, <coughs> excuse me, inadequacies by developing what the person views as desirable traits of observation, listening, and reporting. Nurses that are confident and assertive will enhance each other's knowledge base and legal responsibility. Nurses need to recognize each stage of the problem-solving process. Problem-solving involves strategy, people skills, self-management, and creative thinking skills. The most important step in problem-solving is defining the problem. You then need to set goals and figure out what you have to do to accomplish those goals and when they need to be accomplished and how are you going to measure progress and then monitor performance against target goals and revise your plan accordingly. So this kind of shows what happens when you have unresolved patient issues. So what can you as the nurse do? Well, the nurse is accountable for his or her own behavior and their responses to others' behavior. Nothing irritates me more. Well, I guess it doesn't irritate me, but it, it frustrates me. And when people say, I'm angry because you did this, or I'm sad because of because somebody hurt my feelings or I'm unhappy because somebody is not doing their part. Each one of us owns our own responses to the behavior. We those feelings may be evoked in us because of a situation, but it's up to each one of us individually to determine how we are going to let those situations affect us. So initially maybe you're angry, initially maybe you're sad, or you're upset, but are you going to allow those situations to control your behavior? you are accountable for your own behavior and response. Make sure that you maintain a positive attitude about the contributions that you can make to 
client care. And always keep in mind the effects on the client. So these are the problem solving steps outlined for you very simply. Make sure that you always know what the real problem is. Use the nursing process as you help determine the goal. Make certain that you consider all possible solutions. Try out the alternatives if necessary. Don't be too quick to change your approach. Make sure that you give it time to work when you're doing your evaluation. And then repeat those steps as necessary.